Welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to do a half page scene here using some of the designs from both Nature Sets number 26 with the fences and 27 with the birch trees. And right now what we're doing is we are kind of establishing a little bit of an off-center um, entry point for these fences. I usually do them a little bit off-center just to kind of follow the rule of thirds type of compositional format here. You could do it real, you know, directly center if you want to. Um, it would create kind of this real formal structure, but I prefer it a little bit off. It's hard to see the, the piece of paper that I'm working on here, but it is um, eight and a half by five and a half, half page. Okay, now what I'm doing right here is with the Tiny Rocks small stamp, I'm establishing um, both texture, but I'm using this rock um, stamp to kind of tone in the area as well. So you can see me kind of building up those, uh, you know, repetition of imagery at the base of the fences to kind of give it a little bit of a, a shading, a shaded look and to kind of plant those um, fence posts into the surface so you can do that with um, shadow but you can also do it with texture being used as shadow okay so um, I'm doing it in both black and brown here uh, the brown is barely visible <laughs> I don't know if it was visible but it kind of gave me a little bit of a head start when we start toning it in with uh, colored pencils later so the more that I can do with the dye based inks um, I do that just to save myself some time with the, you know, um, post-impression coloring, uh, in this case with the uh, colored pencils. Okay, so that was the sedge filler in the background to give myself um, a little bit of a horizon line. It's not very visible. I guess you can do without it, but um, I don't know. For me, it's it kind of plants, a, I don't know, a ground texture. Okay, now these are birch trees, and I wiped off the bottom portion of them so that it would stamp out lighter around the area where it's going to overlap the uh, the fence, okay? I wanted to create a little bit more separation between the fence and the, uh, the trunks here. Now I'm wiping off one of the trees here, and I wiped off a little bit too much of that tree to the uh, left of it here, so it barely stamped out, but so be it there. See that kind of that leaning tree going off there? It kind of disappears because I accidentally wiped it off, but who cares? You know, we'll deal with it. Okay, wiping off the bottom again. See in that bottom part of the trunks where it's overlapping the fence, it's lighter because I wiped off some of that um, image. I mean, it would probably be okay to not wipe it off, but it just, I don't know, it provides that little extra separation between what would be background imagery and the foreground objects, okay? So that one right there, I didn't really wipe it off too much, and it's not really a big problem because the, uh, the birch trees are more of an open style of image. If it was a solid black or something like that, like, a, like an evergreen tree, I would probably wipe it off a little bit more. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'm going to add in some trees here, some tree uh, foliage here, and I didn't know if this would really work out or not. This is the first time I've kind of done this. I've been doing um, kind of foreground foliage um, on vellum and then blocking it out on the back. You can see some of my vellum work. I even have a, a playlist called vellum, but I, as I was stamping this over that this, I mean, this is dye, ba you know, the greens dye based inks. It, it's all dye based inks um, through this point, but the black is showing right through the green. But I thought it looked just fine that way. Sure, it's transparent, but I don't know. I, I thought it gave it a, I don't know, kind of an okay look to do it that way. I don't have any problem with it, so I was pleasantly surprised. Because I don't want to have to use vellum every time I do the birch trees or something like that to give it, uh, you know, the leaves more of an opacity. Okay, so we're going in here with 
oh, I use about three different values of brown for my road. And in this lightest value of brown that I'm using, I'm using it um, in a very light way as well. Just kind of establishing, oh, kind of a base coat, a base texture of this brown. And by doing so, I'm also establishing my lighting. Okay, now this one's going to be easy in terms of a lighting scheme. I always do easy lighting schemes, but this one is I'm just putting some very light values of brown on the road, but I am making the area underneath the fence posts, fence and fence posts, darker, okay? And again, that what that does is it kind of anchors the objects into the ground. So I tend to do this at the base of trees or anything going into the ground. I give it a little bit more of a a darker base um, in the form of a shadow or just kind of a, I don't know, just a darker base coat. It gives it a heavier visual feel to the base of it, thus establishing kind of a visual weight to your objects. Otherwise, your objects will be kind of floating um, from a visual standpoint. So when you darken in the area at the base of them, they're more substantial um, they have, um, like I said, I keep saying visual weight, but um, it anchors it. It gives uh, the objects an opacity, meaning they're casting a shadow. Without the shadows, it kind of represents them being a little bit more transparent. So, okay, so see when I'm going with my darker tones, I'm putting at the base of the trees, at the base of the uh, fence posts, and we just keep establishing it like that. Okay, now this is kind of a little bit of a bluish gray tone here, and what I'm doing right here, it's kind of hard to see, kind of uh, without being zoomed in here, but I'm coloring in the outside edges, the outside half of the trees, more than the whole thing, okay? So I'm establishing an interior lighting, so I'm saying that the trees are being center lit. So the trees on the right side of the scene I'm right side shading the tree, the tree trunks. And the trees to the left, I'm establishing more of a shadow on the left side of all those trunks. Okay? And then to give um, the scene continuity, if you color something with one color, it's a good idea to bring that same color into other areas of the scene. Otherwise, things are a little bit um, separate, um, they don't seem related. So. I did bring some of that um, tone into my um, grassy area and also on the uh, the path. Okay, this is a black, and I'm establishing that shading, um, um, uh, whatever, the shading direction um, with black now, okay? The lighting direction, I should say. Okay, now, I don't know, as I went along here, I thought, eh, I could use a little bit more of a different browns. The more kind of variety of colors you bring into your piece, the more kind of a visual richness um, potential there is, okay? But the thing is, is that when you, the more colors you add, um, try to keep your lighting established. In other words, when you get into the, the medium and darker tones, try to retain some of those lighter areas that you've established early on with the lighter colors that you've used. Now, if you decide, oh, it's way too light in there, you know, in some areas, then go back in with your lighter tones and kind of fill in there a little bit more until you, uh, you know, you think it's uh, um, at the point that you... Uh, like from a visual standpoint, from a color continuity standpoint, lighting continuity, etc. Okay. Okay, now I thought we can use some variety here. I was thinking about using that vellum in here, but I thought that looks fine as is, so I wanted to bring um, a second color into the mix when it comes to the uh, foliage. And where we overlap some of that green with yellow, it creates a different type of green. So 
it's not just two colors in there, it's really three because you've established um, some of that overlapping which changes the uh, the overall appearance. Okay, now these are the, um, the birch leaves left and right. They're larger. So I'm establishing, you know, some trees that are much closer to us now, but also it frames the scene off. So I'm using the uh, the right side ones on the right side, and here the left side ones are on the left. I thought about going with black to bring somewhat of a balance to those dark fences down below, but I thought, eh, those other leaves in the background were so light, I thought black would be a little bit too much, especially because I wasn't um, planning on bringing any color into that sky area, like a blue or something like that. So you have these leaves just contrasting against that white of the paper. So I went with a, a dark, um, in this case, bottle green. It's a really dark um, green from Marvy. Okay, so I'm grabbing some um, acrylic paint pens. These are the 0.7 millimeter pens. And I'm just giving a little bit of shimmer um, to these leaves in here by putting a little bit of light into it. Um, the, the additions are really quite minimal um, because these pens here, at least the particular colors that I was working with here, the kind of yellowish, um, I don't know, pastel yellow and this, uh, that other light green, it just, they were really translucent. Okay, so a lot of the color was showing through. So I just went straight in with the, the white. When you add these white, the white down to, um, by the time it dries, you get some of the colors showing through. So um, it doesn't really look like a white white. Okay, but it's giving it that little bit of shimmer into the uh, the leaves. I, I just needed to establish some of that white light um, that's in the background there on some of these leaves. It just gives it more continuity. And then later on in the scene, what I'll do is I'll bring in my three millimeter white paint pen and add some of that to that road. Okay. Now at this point in time, I was thinking the intensity between those leaves at the top and the intensity at the bottom, it don't, really the lack of intensity at the bottom, you know, established with because of, you know, the uh, the characteristics of the colored pencil against very, very bright tones of uh, the Marvy dye base inks, I thought we can use some more richness down below. So I'm taking this Distress ink. Um, it's a very light ink um, in the form of the walnut stain, but I'm bringing that down into the mix here. Now, I'm, I would normally not do that and put it over the top of the, uh, oh, that was um, antique linen. This is the walnut right here. I normally wouldn't put it over wax, you know, the wax of the colored pencil, because I wouldn't think it would stick. But it looked pretty good here. It, it was establishing it fairly well. I, I don't know, I was surprised. And this is black from Marvy, okay? It was going so well with the uh, the distress inks, I thought, well, let's go ahead with the uh, the black here and see how it looks. And see how that shaded area down there? It just looks so much more substantial with the uh, that dye-based ink right over the top of the colored pencil. It's anchoring the bottom down a little bit more. And, I don't know, just in conjunction with the texturing of the uh, colored pencil, I thought it worked out really good. So, um, I don't know, I learned something um, in that process right there. But I will spray seal that. Um, when I'm, you know, done. Okay, let's stamp out um, our focal point here. I wasn't sure what I was going to stamp in there. I've used um, this one deer so many times that it's just perfect for that, but I wanted to establish, um, you know, a little figure amongst the trees. It's um, any type of little focal point like that can establish kind of a nice I don't know, a feeling of tranquility. If you put um, a person into the scene like that too, it tends to be very kind of subconsciously transportive when it comes to scenes too. Um, you can put yourself right in that person, person's uh, 
place. Um, this one's a lady writer, so I don't know if I'm being transported, but I might be in the scene looking out at her. Okay, now I heat set that because um, a lot of those dye based inks up there were very wet still, um, with especially with the solid leaf images and that green. And then I applied that um, dye based ink right over the wax, so that was probably a little bit um, wet too. Okay, so this is the thing that I've been um, really focusing on with a couple of my latest videos, just talking about what white pigment ink can do to a scene, okay? I like the scene as is, but adding this white pigment ink in a very light application over certain areas, usually it's where light meets darker, a darker area or darker objects, okay? It just brings in this airy, kind of dreamy quality into the scene. And it gives it more of a three-dimensional look, too, because what you're saying is there's moisture in the air, and that moisture is being illuminated by the light. So you've really strengthened this idea of scenic lighting um, in the scene, and you've established um, there's this moisture in the air in between the objects, too. So it's not just objects. Now what you're doing is you're dealing with the space in between things. And that lends itself to more of a, a feel and kinesthetic type of emotional quality to the scene. Okay. Now we're going in with my 3 millimeter acrylic paint pen. I'm just adding a lot more texturing into the, uh, the ground, the road down there. Um, I just wanted a little bit more of a a pop to the lighting, okay? You know, more impact, okay? Now, it's fairly subtle because I'm adding this white into a light area. But from a textural standpoint, when you hold it up closer to you, you can see those little, you know, those white dots. I guess that they're not so little. Okay, and now what I'm doing is, you know how we went in and I shaded the far side of each tree trunk with the colored pencils to add the shadows. Well, on the opposite side where the trees are facing the light, I'm kind of removing somewhat the line that defines that tree on that side. I'm not completely um, eradicating it because we need to see that outline on there because it, there's a white background in there um, in the sky. But I'm getting rid of a lot of that um, line, giving it a more three-dimensional look. Okay, when anytime you have outlines to designs, it flattens um, the whole look. So on most of my designs, I don't have outlines, but where they're needed, in a case like white birch tree trunks, I still can eradicate it a lot with the use of this white pen. So. On the inside portions of those tree trunks, I've um, used the, uh, the white pen. Now I'm kind of um, establishing a little bit more of a shadow on the opposite side, reiterating that center lighting. Okay. I think I'm thinking about um, <laughs> what I should uh, mount this on. Okay, just taking my uh, glue runner here. I like to do the edges, and I like to do this cross uh, section in here. And being that this is a really, you know, a fairly large scene on the half page, I do that. Uh, I know I hit it quite a bit with that tape. And also because when you heat set, you know, your card stocks or whatever you're heat setting, it kind of curls a little bit. So this stiff um, card stock will kind of reestablish the flat, um, the flatness that I want on a, on a card. All right, so I'm just giving it a little bit of a white border. This is what I do on probably about... I don't know, it's probably 95% of my scenes. 
um, those little white, I don't know, kind of embellishments, usually dots or whatever, um, they're kind of reinforced with that little bit of a, a border like that. And this is a big scene, so I'm not going to double uh, mount. I don't know, I, I, I guess that next uh, piece is mounting it, so I guess that's a double mount. But sometimes I bring in like another color, like in this case it would probably be um, like a green or something like that, which would look pretty good. All right, so this is just your dark glossy cardstock. I'm just using glossy because I have it. I have a big ream of it, and it's probably, I don't know, it could be 30 years old at this point in time, but a ream had 200 sheets in it, or has 200 sheets. So, trying to get it straight, I just eyeball it, I don't measure, I don't know, one of these days I might have to measure as my eyesight goes. <laughs> I still have pretty good close-up vision. Okay, so I decided to add a quote down below, and I don't know, the thing that I was trying to decide is if uh, I should um, add the quote on a separate piece and mount it there, but I thought it'll go right onto that path, no problem. So we're just stamping it. I am using the Brilliance ink because it'll stick to just about anything. Maybe like a Stazon would work too, but the Brilliance is a little bit thicker. And there we have it. Nature always wears the colors of the spirit. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.